And our next inductee has no equal either. Again, please turn your attention to the video screens. During the mid-1980s, Greg Swindell was one of the most dominant pitchers in college baseball. His career totals at the University of Texas are staggering. He compiled a 43-8 record in 77 games with a 1.92 ERA. In 50 starts, the three-time All-America pitched 32 complete games and set school records with 14 career shutouts and 501 strikeouts. He remains among the top 10 in the Longhorn record book for ERA, victories, innings, appearances, starts, and complete games. Swindell was a member of three Southwest Conference championship teams and in 1984 and 1985 led the Longhorns to a second place finish at the College World Series. In 1985, his 19-2 record, 1.67 ERA, 15 complete games, and 204 strikeouts earned him National Player of the Year honors from Baseball America. Swindell pitched in the major leagues from 1986 to 2002 and had 1,542 career strikeouts. He was an All-Star in 1989 with Cleveland and was a member of the 2001 Arizona Diamondbacks World Championship team. Greg Swindell now takes his rightful place among the best pitchers in history as a member of the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Thanks, Lloyd, for the extra minutes. Uh, uh, people that know me, um, I, I really don't talk very much and too often, so five minutes is, is a long time for me. But tonight, I have, I have a lot of people to thank, and I might go over five minutes. <laughs> um, first of all, thank you to the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. It really is truly an honor to, to go into with the, such a great class that I'm going in with tonight, and congratulations to all my fellow inductees. Being a native Texan, this is my highest honor. It's um, being from, I'm humbled and very proud that I'm a Texan. I have my notes on my phone, sorry. I have a lot of friends and family with me tonight. Got four or five tables over here. Thank you for being here. You've either touched me personally or athletically or both to help me achieve this honor. I can't thank them all individually, but I would like to thank some. Um, if tonight had happened from 2009 to 2017, it wouldn't have felt the same. We all make decisions in our life, some good, some bad. My wife and I divorced 11 years ago. And if you want to see, read the rest of the story, she's writing a memoir, roundinghome.com, memoir.com. <laughs> you can read all about it right there. I had to plug the book. But it's not just about relationships, or it is about relationships, raising three daughters and a special needs child. But with bad decisions, there are a lot of good decisions. We've now been back together for two years. <laughs> Twenty-six years total, and with Sarah and my daughters here tonight, we call ourselves the OG Squad <laughs> for the original gang. I love you, Sarah. Thanks for having me back where I belong, back where we belong. Haley, Brenna, Sophia, my three daughters, are here with their husbands and fiancé. Sophia still got about another year and a half to go. She's got to graduate college first. I love you all so much. Mom, you've been there through everything. I don't think you've missed a wedding, a birthday, a graduation, a birth. Thank you, and I love you. In Little League, my mom was our statistician. It took me a while to realize that I led the team in ERA and average every year. <laughs> I don't know if it's coincidence or what. It's a mom thing. Yeah. But two that aren't here tonight, 
My father passed away 19 years ago. I learned how to play baseball from Harold Swindell. His drive and determination paid off for me. Dad, I know you're listening. Thank you, and I love you. Also, my son, Dawson, he's an autistic nonverbal. That we are parents, again, to our son. He turned 18, he's incapacitated, can't speak, can't make decisions for himself, so we had to go to court. We had to go to court, fill out an application to have our own son back. I was looking at it for a 6'4 left-hander that throws hard. <laughs> But uh, we got him back. He wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't have tolerated tonight, but I love you, buddy. My sisters, Treva Christie, my brother, Corky, I love you guys. And my in-laws, the Bakers, A and B team, you figure it out. The gang's all here. I don't know when the last time that happened, when everyone could be in the same room. So thank you to the Texas Sports Hall of Fame for that. Miss Jancy. My high school coach, wife, coach passed away a couple years ago. Um, we were state champs in 1982, right here in Texas, in Austin. Um, his discipline, really, it didn't matter if you were the last guy on the roster or, or the top guys on the roster. I remember, and it, it's funny that I'm bringing this story up, that my friend Rusty, who's here tonight, Earl, um, he, uh, he had some issues going on. I had a car, so we, I had to take him home because he had to take care of some business. And um, while we were gone, it just so happens that Coach Sullivan showed up at the school, here, Coach here at Baylor, and um, we weren't there. And it was Coach Jancy's policy that if you were out of class, he would spell permit on your butt. If you were playing basketball, he would spell permit on your butt. Well, sure enough, we showed up, and who's waiting there? coach will give you that look like that and he's like where y'all been so we told him he goes who wants to go first I said I'm getting it over with I'm going in well on the third pop because we didn't have a permit the third one he broke the paddle on my butt so Rusty you've never had any from coach Jancy you, you never had to get them because there's no paddle left coach Gus coach Bethay University of Texas when we got there thank you for taking chance I'm a chubby kid out of Sharpstown with an 84 mile an hour fastball. My pitching coach, Clint Thomas, is here tonight. Tony, he's an Aggie. <laughs> well, it, it, it took a long time. But at, at the University of Texas, we have a tradition where after the national anthem, we put our horns up and sing the eyes of Texas. Well, forever, we're like, where's Clint? Where, where, where's Clint? He's nowhere to be found. Well, being the Aggie that he was, he did go in the locker room. He never put his horns up. Uh, we, we found out, and we weren't ranked. We weren't supposed to get to Omaha. We made a deal. We made a bet. If we got to Omaha, he puts his horns up. So, well, we made it to Omaha, and Clint Thomas put his horns up. He even put them up tonight for a picture. But it, it, was, it was Clint, that the, the, the drive, he called almost every pitch I threw in college. People say, what, what about this and that? And I go, well, that man called every pitch. <laughs> I, I just threw them. So, Thank you, Clint, for all you've done for me. I definitely wouldn't have made very much success at the next level if it wasn't for you. And I brought up Earl, Rusty Richards, my teammate, best friends, roommates in college. It wasn't for him. They came to watch him. University or a scout was there. Doug Gassaway was there. I've, I've told this story a thousand times. Rusty, I'm sure, rolls his eyes every time, but it, it's true that when they came to see him, I happened to pitch that night, and the scout, Doug Gassaway, tells Coach Gus and Coach Bethay that Rusty, yeah, sure, he's, he's University of Texas caliber, but you ought to look at the pitcher. And Coach Gus says, well, how hard does he throw? And he goes, 84, and I think Coach Gus laughed at him. But with that recommendation, they gave me the scholarship, and I went to the University of Texas, and I wouldn't be standing here tonight. And I've told Rusty this a thousand times if it wasn't for you. They came to see you, and being the best friend that you are, we, we, do, we strive together, and I love you, buddy. Um, with, with, 